Okay, and we are ready for kids baking class number four. We're going to be talking about pie crusts and different pies and tarts. And so we're going to start with the crust, which is the most important part. And so we're going to be making an all butter crust. Um, you can make crust with shortening or a combination of butter and shortening. I like the butter because it has a good flavor and it's nice and flaky, but a shortening crust um, will usually come out a little bit more tender. So we're going to start with two and a half cups of flour and our lovely helpers are going to measure it in. So remember, we always scoop into the measuring cup and then level it off. And if you don't have a scoop, you could totally just use a spoon and then just use a, um, a knife to scrape off the top. Um, the reason why we do this is because recipes are written this way. So if you're pushing it in, you're going to get extra flour um, into the cup if you're just putting it against the side of the bag. And then that's going to change the outcome of your baked good. So very nicely measured. And so we're putting in two and a half cups. We're going to make two pie crusts here. And so you're going to get the flour in there. Very nicely done. And go ahead and dump that in. We're going to put in a tablespoon of sugar. I'll just do that one real quick. Um, for the sugar, when we're doing it in such a small quantity, and because sugar doesn't really compact as much, I'm just going to not worry about um, putting it in. I'm just going to measure it like that. Same thing with the salt. Um, but the salt, remember, we always measure over the sink or the trash can or something because you don't want to get too much salt in your baked good and mess it up and then you ruin all the other ingredients. So we do it over the sink. I'm going to plop that in. And then if one of you girls just wants to kind of mix it a little bit, um, what I just handed her is called a pastry blender. And the pastry blender um, is not necessarily a mixing tool, but we're going to use it for that so we don't also have to get other things dirty. Um, but what we're going to be using it for is putting in our butter. And so you want the butter to be nice and cold you, because you don't want it to melt and just soak into the flour. So um, the cold butter will stay in lots of little tiny, um, you want it to be about the size of peas. And then um, as it melts in the oven, it's going to release steam and that's what's going to create the layers. So if each of you girls want to put in one stick of butter, we're going to put those both in there. Um, and then our last ingredient is ice water. Again, the purpose of the ice water is to keep the butter nice and cold so that it doesn't melt into your dough because um, if it did, then you would just have like a kind of um, not very sweet cookie dough. And that's not really what we want. We want a nice crispy crust. And so we want the butter to stay nice and cold. I know those ones are kind of booby trapped there. All right, and then we're gonna use the pastry blender to cut it up. So you can just dump it on in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so as soon as we pause it, they'll wash their hands and everything, but you're going to use the pastry blender to cut straight through the butter. You're going to first cut it into slices. It slices straight through it like this. And then I'll give you girls a chance to use it. And so what you're trying to do is not um, mix the butter in, but you're trying to cut the butter into lots of little pieces. This is just like having four knives to use all at one time. So that's why we use the pastry blender, because um, four knives could get kind of dangerous, You'd be like Edward scissor hands. And, and so um, you can just kind of shake it off every once in a while, like tea swizzle. And then um, just make sure that you're kind of coating the pieces of butter with the flour. So I'm gonna pass this along over here to my helpers, and you guys can um, continue to do that. And so you're just gonna press it and press it and press it. And this takes a little while, um, but then once we're done with that, we'll add the cold water. So we need half a cup of ice water. And so like seriously, get the ice in it, make sure it's nice and cold. And then we're gonna kind of work it together just really gently with a fork or your fingers um, until it just barely holds together. It's hard, huh? <laughs> the other way to do this is in a food processor. If you have a food processor, just use pulse on and off until it looks like there's like little like peas and carrots and stuff, but not, not green and orange, that'd be weird. Um, but that's about the size you want the butter to be. You don't want it to incorporate all together in a dough, again, because that would, would melt. You guys got this all sticky <laughs> from the butter. Okay, 
so we're we're almost we're almost there. So it does it does take a little while. You can also use your fingertips. When I was in culinary school, they made us do it without a pastry blender, and you just had to take up each little piece of butter and then pull it in half and keep doing that until they were all super small. So it took like forever. <laughs> so Brett, Emily. All right, so um, let me show you about what this looks like. You want chunks of butter and you want flour. You do not want a dough. Okay, so now we're going to add, if we could have it quiet on the set, please, Tiny Top. So we're going to measure about half a cup. Um, so I'm kind of putting it around here. Um, I'm gonna need to add a little bit more. I was just shy of half a cup, but this, what you want is you want it to hold together, but you don't want to overwork it. So um, you notice I'm not like stirring it like we would muffin batter or something. I'm gently folding it so that it can all get kind of moistened. Um, this wasn't quite a full half a cup. I'm maybe gonna add another tablespoon. Oh, I'm getting ice cubes. And then you just want it to barely hold together. We're going to press it into a disc, two different discs. This recipe makes two crusts. Um, and then, <laughs> making a mess. Makes two crusts. I just make a mess. Um, and then we're going to put it in the refrigerator and we're going to let it chill for about 30 minutes. Again, the reason why we do that is so that the butter stays cold so that it doesn't melt into our dough. So, starting to come together here a little bit. Um, okay, maybe another tablespoon of water. Oops, not an ice cube. <laughs> okay. And then sometimes what you can even do is once you have it moistened, you can pour it out onto the counter until it starts to hold its shape a little bit and just push it together. <laughs> you want to do it too? Okay. Oh, again with the mess. <laughs> no mess. I'm going to have to make this 2x when I edit the video. <laughs> okay, so what we're doing is we're kind of, see how when I squeezed it, it is holding together? So what we want is two discs that kind of hold together. And it's okay if it cracks a little bit right now. You don't want to knead it or work it too much because that will make a really stiff crust. As it sits in the refrigerator, it will kind of relax a little bit and come together. And so again, I'm just kind of squeezing it together until it kind of holds its shape. And then we're gonna refrigerate it for like 30 minutes and then we'll roll it out. And that's it for now. Okay, it's been about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, and so you can see that this is still nice and cold. I've kind of pushed it using the plastic wrap into a nice disc. We're gonna roll it out, it's gonna crack a little bit, but it'll be okay. Um, we are gonna make my favorite kind of pie today, which is a galette. And that's actually a free form pie that we're gonna make on a cookie sheet. And so, the reason I like it is because you get lots of yummy crust and um, a little bit of fruit kind of evenly distributed. It's kind of like a pizza a little bit. So we're gonna start with plenty of flour. <laughs> We can always um, dust off the extra flour, but once your pie gets stuck to the counter, then you're kind of um, in a hard spot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that it's nicely coated on both sides with flour. And then I'm gonna roll it out, and we always roll out starting in the middle and push out to the edges. And then you're gonna turn it like a clock about 15 minutes every time, whether you go clockwise or not clockwise, counterclockwise I guess is the opposite. You always want to make sure that you have flour on the bottom of it so it doesn't stick. Every once in a while I'm going to try to make sure that I'm keeping a nice circle shape. I'm going to keep twisting it and then I'll let you girls have a chance too. Okay, so I don't, I don't know if you can see this, but there's like, you can see where the butter is kind of spreading out. Can you get in get that close? See how there's like yellow spots there where the butter is? It's kind of getting flat and squished in there. So that's going to create our nice, yummy, flaky layers. And so again, we're just going to keep rolling from the center out. And then we're going to just keep turning it a little bit like that until it's a little bit thinner because you don't want like a super duper thick crust. Okay, so um, would one of you girls like, I'm going to just move this so it doesn't end up on the floor. Would one of you girls like to 
Roll it a little bit. And don't be afraid to press kind of hard. There you go. Nice. And take a turn. Nice. Here, now let me move it back a little bit closer so that you have some more leverage. you joining me on YouTube. That was the angry eye directed at my son. He's making noise in the background. Very nicely done. All right, so I'm just going to give it one or two more quick rolls. I'm going to um, twist it around again, and then I'm going to twist it one more time. I just want to make sure that I'm keeping an approximately circular shape, and it's okay if the edges aren't a perfect circle. So this is about how big I want it to be. It's sticking just a little bit, so I'm Kind of getting some more flour under there. I can feel it's a little bit thick in this spot, so I'm going to fill in that extra spot over there. And then the last step is going to be to get it onto my pan. And so as I'm doing that, I'm going to try and shake off some of this extra flour. You could use like a pastry brush, or I just kind of shake it off again like tea swizzle. Okay, and then we're going to just roll it onto our pan. And then I am going to go get our filling. So what I have here, I'll show you, is some pears in brown sugar and butter. And you can see how it's kind of making like a caramely sauce. Um, the pears are just kind of getting sauteed there in the pan. Um, normally we wouldn't put a hot filling um, on a cold crust, but for the sake of time, that's what's happening right now. <laughs> so if you're doing this at home, get your filling ready, get your crust ready, wait for this to cool um, before you roll out your dough. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to kind of just arrange this, and I'm going to show you the last little bit of how we shape it. It's so nice and caramely. Okay. And so you don't want it very thick. Okay, so I'm probably going to use about that much. Get all that yummy, good caramelized sugar in there. If you wanted to, alternately, instead of sauteing them, I like the caramelized, yummy flavor that it gives. But you could also just arrange fresh pears and put it in like concentric circles and make all kinds of pretty designs with it. But this is how we shape it. So I'll start it and then I'll let you girls try. So we're going to... I don't want to get this on the bottom, but we're going to start by folding over one edge just a little bit, and then we fold over the next little part. Extra flour on there. Then we turn it, we fold over the next little part, and then we do the next little part. Do you girls want to try the next little bit? Good. And then it just kind of overlaps, and you go all the way around. And um, what we'll do right before we put it in the oven is I'll dust it a little bit with sugar. We're going to put it in at about 375. And um, the nice thing about this, too, is usually a pie bakes for about an hour. This one's going to be done in like 20, 25 minutes. Okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it just a little bit farther in. So see how on this side I did a nice uh, thick crust. And you guys had a nice thin crust, which leaves more of the filling out. So... Either way is fine. I'm just going to make it so that it looks all the same. But both ways are right. It just depends on what your preference is. Um, so I'm just going to make it. And then you can kind of like, okay, eh, now it looks a little bit more like a circle. <laughs> um, the last step before we throw this in the oven is I'm going to give it a little sprinkle with sugar just around the edges. You can um, brush it with milk first so that the sugar sticks better. But I'm just going to like that for a nice rustic let. And so you could use any fruit for this. You could do nectarines, peaches, um, blackberries, blueberries, raspberries, all kinds of yummy berries, apple. Um, but we're going to bake this and I'll be right back when it comes out of the oven. And here's our finished product. I was starting to cut it into squares to make lots of little tiny servings, but you could definitely cut it into wedges. That would be the preferred way to serve it. And um, that is our finished product.